Well, we live in a remarkable time right now. It's as though a meteor just hit the planet and the meteor is us. And our impacts, I mean, you all know this, in this age of man, our impacts are just taking off exponentially. Population growth, land conversion, emissions, perhaps the yuckiest statistic is cigarette butts. 4.7 trillion cigarette butts a year. And the response to that, I'm a card carrying environmentalist, I'm a tree hugger. And the response to that could be pretty disquieting. Uh, my first re response to it was to be appalled. And I was very much engaged in court cases stopping timber companies for the sake of spotted owls. And part of that vision is this notion of what's nature, what's natural, and trying to preserve nature, all, all natural. And now that I have time to reflect on this, I think this is one of the dumbest labels around. And that's sort of the theme of the next few minutes, is all natural and this age of man, the Anthropocene, and where we're going with the environment. Um, one reaction is a little misanthropic. Uh, this is not my reaction. Uh, it's kind of unreasonable. My reaction is to look at images like this. And this is the standard, if you go to a science conference on Anthropocene, you'll see these types of things. It's lights from a NASA satellite. Those lights are a beautiful thing. Those are lights that children can read at night by. We want to have those lights in Africa. And it's possible, this is not natural. It's possible because of technology. And it's possible because of improvement technology. In Babylon, it took a week of work to have one hour of reading at night. In the Civil War, one hour of work. Now it takes about a millisecond of work to have that hour of reading at night. That's a good thing. And we also have to rethink about natural from what we think of pristine tropical rainforests. This has happened around the world. This is a tropical Amazon rainforest. It's been cleared, and there's trenches there. It turns out under that rainforest is evidence of a huge city and civilization maybe 150 miles across it and that's been grown over. And you find this in Asia and throughout the tropics. Take an iconic place. If you want to go see wildlife, you would go to Kruger National Park in South Africa. But guess what? How all natural is that? There's 300 wells that we've driven there, drilled there to, to gather the animals that you can see, 50 dams and a golf course. Something a little bit closer to home that really started to change my thinking about this when I was a kid, my dad took me to Pittsburgh for a vacation. I don't know why he did that. He was a coal miner, so it wasn't the greatest vacation. But I went back th you know, th th three years ago, and what I saw was amazing. When I had gone there as a kid, the rivers were polluted. There was no fish in them. It was toxic. It was literally toxic. I went back three years ago. They have bass fishing contests there. It's beautiful. I ran along the river. Um, so you don't feel too sorry for my, my dad also took me to Yellowstone. But when I went to Yellowstone, this was an impossibility. There wasn't even any talk about bringing wolves back. It wasn't even a consideration then. Now you can go to the Yellowstone ecosystem. There's a herd of 5,000 bison. There's over 500 wolves, a couple dozen packs of wolves, and 500 grizzly bears. Unheard of, unimaginable 30 or 40 years ago what we brought back. And perhaps one of the most stunning things of being brought back, this is happening in cities all over the world. It's called daylighting rivers. The color picture is in Seoul today. And visited Seoul, that's a river that runs through the center of the city. The black and white is what it used to be. It was covered by a freeway. They took it off, the fish have come back, the birds have come back, it's thriving and the people love it. You just see people going out and, and enjoying it. So what's natural? It's not just that we can restore and replenish nature. Nature itself is pretty inventive. This is a coyote, only it's not your wimpy California coyote. This is an eastern coyote. It's got wolf genes in it. At some point, wolves were so scarce that uh, uh, Father Wolf was looking for his mate, and he decided if, had to make do with a coyote. Well, with these wolf genes in it, these, these coyotes have, have much stronger jaws, 30% heavier, Instead of feeding on just mice and rabbits, they could take down deer. Sadly, they could also take down hikers. But that's pretty inventive nature. That's amazing. And I think this animal is cool. And here it is outside Chicago. Nature itself is inventive. And then what technology can do for us. This is a Spanish goat, a Bucardo, Ibex, in the Pyrenees. The last one died in 2000. Species, it went extinct. 
Her name was Celia. They found her with her, her skull bashed in. Luckily, biologists scraped some cells off the ear, put them in a freezer, came back and three years later, cloned it and resurrected it. So they got back the Bucardo. Now, it only lived for 12 minutes. Only lived for 12 minutes, but that's, you know, the Wright brothers, their first flight was six minutes. And I bet within 10 years, you can mark my words this, within 10 years, we'll have resurrected this extinct goat. So this technology in nature, it's an interesting juxtaposition. We work with Dow Chemical Company. And through that work, we've, there's going to be choices. In this age of man, there's choices between technology and nature. And it's not either or. It's, it's a creative mix. It turns out that ozone mitigation is a big deal. This is in Freeport, Texas. Dow currently tries to address ozone mitigation with you know, the scrubbers, the standard approach. We've done the calculations of modeling and economics and restoring hardwood forests that actually saves money. It does it better for, le for less. Those of you who come from the East Coast know about storm damage. We normally protect ourselves with storm damage and wave surge with seawalls and jetties, and that's effective, and it works. But so do oyster reefs and salt marshes. And we can restore those. This is with the Recovery Act, money restoring oyster reefs. And this is in the Gulf of, of Mexico. And this is a, from a Google Earth slide. It works. You can actually see the effect of it. So there's before you have the oyster reefs, and you move to the right, and it's afterwards. You put them in. And look, not only are you, that, those oyster reefs reduce storm surge and the height of the waves as they wash in. You also see the land is building back out. The marsh is building back out. And they are nurseries for fisheries. You get fisheries. And when they degrade, they replenish sand. Let's get that make time. Now, all of this mix of technology and nature requires intelligence. And there's been a number of talks about you know, smart farming and smart technology. It requires what I call, would call environmental intelligence. But there's more people in the world that have access to cell phones than the clean water and electricity. We're using experimentally around the world. This is a terrific community to get real live environmental intelligence. Many of you know that Monsanto has spent a billion dollars to buy what Climate Corporation, which is effectively an environmental intelligence company. And there's so much you can do with environmental intelligence um, if you don't get hung up on ideology, if you just think about outcomes and what you want. Now, when I talk like this, some of my colleagues tell me I'm waving the, fl the white flag. I'm surrendering. You know, I I've just given in to this age of man. And really, we should, we we should retreat I don't think of it that way. I bet you every one of you have been out at night and on the back of your neck probably felt a prickle of your hair standing up. Well, what is that? That's you as a prey. That's you as a prey sensing something. We have 100,000 generations in predator prey, you know, out in nature, only maybe a dozen generations in our sort of modern world. We can't escape that. You cannot take the nature out of us, and you can't take us out of nature. So this age of man, you know, it's, 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 you don't sequester nature over here and man over there. That's not the, the natural condition even. And so there's a really fascinating field of research going on now. And I think you're going to start seeing this reported. Uh, I'm on a couple of PhD committees around the country that are doing this. And it, it's turning out that you can do experiments and basically have nature medicine. If you, go to the web, if you go to the web and look up forest medicine, it's a very big thing in Japan. But the experiments being done in the US are things like you, you have somebody walk for an hour in nature and then walk on a residential street that's not natural. And you measure their cognitive ability. You measure their impulse control, standard tests. And you measure their mood. All are improved with the nature experience. You can even do MRIs and see physiological things. So that just reminds us it's nature and man together. That's the way it's always been. The Anthropocene doesn't have to be a gloomy thing. And so I'm going to end by pointing out that, you know, in the past, our great works, pyramids, you know, Great Wall of China, things like that, I think in the future, what sustainability means is exercising a remarkable creativity and ingenuity in mixing sometimes technology and sometimes nature in ways at a huge scale. Those oyster reefs, a million dollars a mile, 800 miles would basically restore what the Gulf was before with all the oyster reefs. 
It's a billion dollar project. It would be astonishing. We've done the economics on it. It would pay for itself in 10 years. Those hardwood forests for Dow, it's never going to, you're always going to need scrubbers. You're always going to need some technology. You're always going to need scrubbers. But still, those hardwood forests at a grand scale could do lower temperatures, address ozone. 120 million Americans are exposed to ozone. So the future is a mix of nature and technology. And let's not worry about all natural. Thanks.